Thank you for coming. I, uh, I brought a couple things for you today. The first one is this. I don't know if you've ever seen one before. It's called a record album. And for me, it's a symbol of what it means when an industry is perfect. In 1973, the record business was perfect. If I had a record and I liked it a lot and I loaned it to you, I didn't have it anymore, so I'd have to buy another one. Or if I liked it a real lot, and I played it over and over again, I'd wear it out, and I'd have to buy another one. And to go buy another one, I'd have to get in my car and drive to the store. There used to be stores that sold records. And as I was driving to the store, I'd turn on the radio. There used to be a thing called radio. And the radio would broadcast the stuff that this industry made, so I would buy more. And then I would get to the store, and there'd be thousands of these to choose from, and I'd buy a bunch. And then I'd get home, and I'd open my mailbox, and there might be Rolling Stone magazine, or MTV might be on television. There was an uh, uh, oligopoly of record labels. It was perfect. You couldn't help but succeed if you owned a record label in 1973. And we all know what happened everywhere around the world. In just five years, the industry went from perfect to impossible. Every record ever recorded available to anyone who wants one, anytime they want, as long as they got a phone. More music by more musicians listened to more often than ever before. But the music industry is gone. Music survived, the industry went away. That's called the revolution. The industrial revolution made us all able to be here today. It made people around the world wealthy. The Industrial Revolution, 120, 130 years ago, said to people, come, work in this factory. Do this unnatural work of working here for 10 or 12 hours in the dark, doing what you were told. And at the end of the day, we will pay you. Henry Ford famously said to the workers of Detroit, if you're a machinist, come work for me, and I will pay you $5 a day. This, when the typical person was making 50 cents a day. The question was, how could Henry Ford afford to do that? The answer was the assembly line, the process of doing what you're told, the system of enforced obedience, interchangeable parts going ever faster. I am here to talk about a dangerous idea. And the dangerous idea is mostly dangerous if we ignore it. Here's what's happened. In just the last few years, the industrial age, the age where the means of production, my family owns a lot of land, my dad owns a factory, I have a system where the means of production, where the shortcut to success is starting to fade away. And it goes very deep into our culture. Let me ask you a quick question, if you don't mind. Go ahead, please, and raise your right hand just as high as you can. All right, now please raise it higher. Hmm, what's that about? Everyone falls for it every time, right? The first time I said, please raise your hands as high as you can. But there was always a little bit more to go. You learned how to do that when you were in elementary school. You learned how to do that from coaches and from parents and from bosses who said to you, if you give everything, we want a little more. If you make your sales quota, we're going to raise the sales quota. So what we learned to do was hold a little bit back. We learned to be totally obedient, but hold a little bit back. And now suddenly that era, that era that we trained for is fading away. Let me ask you a question. If there's two villages and one village has a good road leading it to the other rest of civilization, the other one doesn't, who's going to do better? If there are two cities, and one city has a great telecommunication system enabling everyone there to talk, and the other one doesn't, who is going to be more productive? The industrial age is ending because now we can make just about anything we want, just about any time we want to. But the connection age, the age when we are connected to other people, and that is the value we create, is just beginning. So if you insist on pushing the world to be like it was, on pushing the world to be the way it was when you first succeeded, you will fail just as surely as the people in the record business failed.
because it is connection that we are basing our future on. The first guy who had a fax machine, what exactly did he do with it? I'll let you think about that one for a couple minutes. The fax machine doesn't work unless other people you know have a fax machine. So you told everyone you know to go get one. How did you find out about Twitter? You didn't find out about Twitter from a big ad campaign they did. You found out about them from someone else who had Twitter. Because people who have Twitter benefit if you have it too. Connections are happening all around us, and those connections are changing everything. You may have learned when you were in business school or wherever about the bell curve, the normal distribution, that graph that shows that all the normal people are in the middle. And so what they push you to do at work, what they push you to do at school, what they push you to do at the charity you work with is to appeal to the masses, to the people in the middle, because that's where everyone is. Well, if you're going to be a mass marketer, if you're going to advertise to everybody, you better have something everyone wants to buy. But here's the thing. Thanks to the internet and other factors, the curve is melting. Now there are more people outside the curve than inside the curve. There are more people over here who are into tattoos, or over here who are into body surfing, or over here who are into fly fishing, or over here who want to understand forex trading. And the middle is hollowing out. The normal people will not listen to you anymore. And they certainly will not choose to connect to you. Because normal people have chosen to be boring. It's the people around the edges, the weird people, the people with a problem who they need to solve. You, the ones who are weird enough to come here to spend time talking about dangerous ideas. The masses aren't here. The weird people are here. So as you seek, yay. It's good to see all of these weird people. So as you seek to grow, the question is, are you going to connect with masses who don't want to hear from you, or are you going to connect with the few who are seeking the interesting? But you can't connect to them if you're boring. And the way you will be boring is by doing what you learned in school and what you learned at your last job. The way you will be boring is by fitting in and doing what you are supposed to do. No, we do not connect to the boring. We connect to the generous. We connect to the interesting. We connect to the interested. And so we have a challenge going forward. The internet is showing up and saying, if you want a microphone here, here's a microphone. If you want to sing, sing. If you want to write, write. If you want to lead, lead. But no one will choose to listen to you if all you're doing is repeating what someone else is saying. That going forward, the only people who are going to get to the next level of where they want to go are not people who are cogs in a giant industrial system. No, the people who are going to make a difference are the ones who find a tribe and lead it, who connect people, who commit to people, who create a culture, like the culture in this room, that lasts, that we have a choice to make right here, right now, today. And the choice is, will you do your job or will you make art? And art doesn't mean a painting. Art means a human act of connection, something that hasn't been done before, something personal, something vulnerable. Here, I made this. Oh, you don't like it. Well, it wasn't for you. Here, I made this. Some weird person will want it. And then when we do this art, we start to change things. Marcel Duchamp, the famous artist of the early 1900s, in 1917 put a urinal into an art exhibit. It nearly caused a riot. It was a magnificent effort on his part. The second guy to install a urinal was a plumber. And that's the fork in the road. We've given you the means of production. If you own a laptop, you have exactly the same technology that I have, the same technology that Jimmy Wales, who started Wikipedia, has, the same technology of the people you read about in the business magazines. We all have the same means of production. We all have the same connection to the internet. And so there's a fork in the road. 
And his, this is where the dangerous idea comes in. Because the easiest thing to do is to give in to the lizard brain, to listen to the voice in the back of your head that says, you better keep your head down, to give in to the resistance and say, no, it's not my turn. I'm not good enough. I don't have the talent. I need to get picked. The only person who will pick you is you. This is the moment to pick yourself, to stand up and say, I'm going this way, follow me. To do it with a posture of generosity. There's an expression where I'm from, when people are stalling, they say, you know, I really need to get all my ducks in a row. I'm gonna do this soon, but I need to get my ducks in a row. The thing is, here's your duck. What are you going to do with your duck? Because you've got them. They're in a row. They're ready to go. One thing I am sure of, and one question I will leave you with, I am sure that everyone in this room, in some way, has succeeded and is going to succeed. That's not the question. The question I'd like you to ask yourself is this. Will you matter? I hope you will. Thanks for your attention.